you will imagine your house. But I can tell you 100%, you can't imagine it, you know, because you will have a feeling of an image. But you can't have an actual picture, you know. Because the picturization, you know, picturing it is a different medium than the imagination. So you will have a feeling, you know, मतलब उसका आभास होगा. But they won't be an actual image because image is always <coughs> intangible. It's not visible ever. What is visible is actually the shadow it casts, mm. or we create a shadow, or materialize a shadow. You know. But you have been taught that what is this is an image, or you can you know there'll be an image you know you'll visualize. It's an impossibility. You know. Then so we were talking like that and. Uh, there was a filmmaker those days called I don't know if you have ever seen this film called Alan Ranning. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So he had stopped making films like Lashin Marinba and Hiroshima Mona. He had <laughs> gone into about <coughs> transparency of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. You know, like you're seeing it how while it is being made. Mm -hmm. It's a transparency, it's a process, you know. They don't make an image, you know. They'll say how it is constructed in front of your eyes. You know. There's no illusion. Right. So they were the anti-illusionist, a school of filmmaking, developing. You know, like, there were a lot of. It, it was a, you know, a new kind of aesthetic, which was political, a politics of aesthetics, you know, not uh, party politics or I like Modi or I don't like Modi. You know, not that kind of politics. You know. So the. Aesthetic also has a certain kind of a politics in our end. So they were making a, a very educational kind of a film. You know, like he made a film called My Uncle from America. Anybody seen? Huh? You have seen My Uncle. Now that is a, he's taken a lesson from a biology uh, uh, zoologist or a biologist about the behavior of the rats then he compares i mean the whole text is from that essay on the behavior of the rats you know like uh, three cages and three rats and their interpersonal relationship with the natural neighbors mm -hmm. or this rat this rat and this rat and what is the relationship between this and that or relationship between this central uh, rat you remember it yes and at the same time, he's uh, cutting it with the human relationship. And one uh, aspect in that film is talking about lies. What is lie? You know, how do we begin to lie? What is our first lie in our life? You know, and how does that lie, you know, like triggers off a world and then you know, make believe world or a, a kind of personality? You know? Even in your childhood, you must have uh, uh, remembered when you first time told a lie in your life. You know, because the children don't lie. You know. But the first time they lie, they remember that moment you know, where they go all the way up you know, to tell that lie. Yeah, this is the moment. You know. And it changes their life. That moment of that first lie. You, know. you must be, you remember? Yeah. Huh? No? All truthful people, eh? And after it has been a series of lies over lies. Ah, but the but that first lie needs courage. You know. And you know that's where you give up your innocence. That's the moment when you lose your innocence and you betray yourself also. At the same time. So anyway, so talking to the psychologist, so he said, "Okay, why don't you do something on education?" And first, he said, "Okay, where does this imagination come from?" You know, basic question. Then the said, uh, "Why don't you uh, uh, do something on education?" Because you know, Ray was making a series, Rene was making a series of films on learning and education about teaching programs mm -hmm. you know, like teachers their seminar and they're talking about how do you teach children how do they recognize you know, what is that you know? 
and I don't know if you've seen this uh, uh, Ranesh series on the you know like the teaching training courses <coughs> the way the teacher will explain children the shape of a cow or shape of an elephant or you know they make this clay models mm-hmm. so anyway so he said and what is learning you know the psychologist friend said what is the process of learning how do we learn because uh, this friend of mine mother this psychologist those days was going through a reading and uh, and he was working with children so those days uh, there was uh, this uh, one uh, uh, psychologist very uh, popular and famous you know like uh, jump piage you have heard of this yeah, yeah, yeah. yes huh yes psychology you know you huh? i was a student of psychology you so you uh, read those the, the stages, stages of development yes, yes yeah. the five huh? stages of child development <coughs> okay uh, you read those uh, the talking to the children uh, different age groups and they'll ask yes. him what is the sun what is the moon yeah. huh uh, years subject and the object that was transferences into other people you know. so that's what it does he writes a novel called memoirs of future in that what it does that he turns this uh, sister and brother into husband and wife 
then uh, the wife has a maid and the husband has a subordinate killer. You know. Now some kind of attack happens in their dwelling and the relationship changes so the maid becomes the you know you know mistress or the you know the power relationship changes and it is about and how they're coping with this external threat you know which is outside of their building or the house then he wrote eight volumes also on the different aspect of psychoanalysis you know, where these four people started multiplying you know into various characters is it the same guy who was part of Tavistock school and they started therapy groups in London? By they, he worked in London, then yeah, yeah, yeah. he shifted to America and he became your know, military intelligence of that. They did a lot of work around conditioning, yes. therapy groups, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They were in, mainly in you know in preparing the you know military yes. intelligence. Anyway. And like Piaget's the theory went into application of building computer memory here. So the, the, the systems, they transfer the human, how human married memory. Now they are applying it to the artificial, but it's a uh, Piaget's uh, model. So the, the, these four people, they start multiplying, you know, and they create a whole universe. And that universe, everything is a character, you know, a zygote or a sperm or a Arjun, Lord Krishna, dinosaurs, you know, the whole, it's a whole universe, you know, and they have a dialogue and they're talking about a different uh, uh, problems of psychoanalysis, like what is gaze, what is uh, attention, you know, fantastic, you know, it's a, well, we dramatize the basic problems of uh, psychoanalysis. So, and it's a, one event, you know, the first event, you know, the seed. Why, why I'm talking about this because how do you construct a screenplay? Because we use the same kind of a design. It's a design in life or in fiction. So since I'm I like I propose that I wanted to make a fiction film on Falke's life and how I was escaping in you know. Now, like say uh, uh, the Beyond what he did with the autobiographical image, turn that into a novel, then turn it into the universe. You 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 see, it's a, actually an escape mode. You know, it's, it's something is running away, and at the same time, it's creating a universe into an escape form. You know, because finally there is a field of escape. You know, you are escaping from something. You know, what is that thing? So anyway, back to the psychoanalyst. And uh, he said, you know, like, okay, you do something on learning. Because we were also in the school where we were anti-illusionists. That we we won't create illusion. We hated Tarkovsky. You know, because I say it's hypnotic. It's uh, mesmerizing, you know. It's the tourism of the consciousness. You know. <laughs> we were young, I'm sorry. You know, and I apologize. But that was our, you know, I won't connect, I disconnect. You know. We won't create surplus reality. We won't add to this. We are the uh, scavengers. You know. We are the jhaduwalas. We will clean first. You know, like, so we were giving ourselves these identities, you know, very, very, you know, fashionable identities. We are vacuum cleaners. <laughs> like that. The, that you know, I was still not very old. So anyway, so this idea, you know, suited me because I, I'm not educated. You know, like we, I didn't have a great schooling, or uh, I was too young to study when I was in FTI. And FTI, there were no teaching as such those days in filmmaking. You know, like there were no books about screenplay writing or. There were no cinema studies. They use and come to India. <laughs> <laughs> they were translated in 85 for something. You know. Darida wasn't there. Khan was also not there. <laughs> La Khan. He used to make fun of it. La Khan, Darida, <laughs> my Khan, my cook. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's a good chance to educate oneself. 
So I said, okay, on education, so what should I do? So I found one 15 page a biography of Dallas of Falke. And uh, this is the kind of a uh, biography. Now we're coming to the subject after interpretation. Log can go. <laughs> if I take the first page of this book, it can take two, three days. Wow. Just the first page. So, So, in this way, he was born in 1870 and uh, he's a, his name is Dundiraj Govind Palke and uh, they are Chitpaun Brahman, even Kokan, Kokanas. There is no Kokan. Kokan is a Amravati is a Kokan. Kokan is a Kokan. Anybody knows about the Chitpavans? Of course, yeah, of course. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but Chitpavans are in you know, close competition with the GSB, God of Saraswati Brahman. Yes. So we're not getting to do that. Yeah. Okay, but uh, <laughs> we can uh, take a uh, what is that short journey yeah, yeah, please, please. to Iran and yes, Iraq yes, and Khorasan, Arab Khorasan, and yeah, yeah. You know, like that. Oh, yeah. Chitpavans, some call them Arabs. And you tell the story yes. why they were called Chit Pounds and why they are called Falke. Anyway, we'll go later because I hadn't researched that. The so beginning is this much. Then his father is uh, the Dadi Shatri and forward of the name at the moment. And he is a Katha watcher, his father. His father is a Katha watcher. He's an astronomer. He's a translator from the Sanskrit to English. He was a professor in either Alfredston College or Wilson College, 1870. And uh, he is the high priest of that temple called uh, 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 Jyotiling Trimukeshwar Temple. Then uh, his one uncle is uh, a works in railway, he is a homeopath. His brother is secretary to Ramachandra Dutt. In Boroda. Uh, Ramachandra Dutt was an old uh, ICS officer at the time of uh, uh, Sayaji Rao Maharaja. Then uh, Raja Ravi Verma is about uh, uh, 30 years old when Falki is 0 year old, 1. Because you know, like you, you're saying, you know, like uh, suppose there's a Falki. So there are other timelines yes. uh, backwards because they're going to meet in future. Okay. So mean they are existing. They're existing. The whole world is existing. So then uh, uh, so in Trimbakeshwar, there's this temple. There is a temple Jyotil Ling, which has a significance that we come to later. Then his father moves to Bombay. He becomes a professor you know, in Alphenstein or somewhere. Falke studies there and then he goes to JJ School of Arts. So he learns three things in JJ School of Arts, which is tracing, tracing, uh, drawing, molding, abstract. You know. I mean, tracing, just take the word. As an abstract word, you know, what is tracing? Mm. What is tracing? Mm. You trace the path of something. Repeat the path of something which is already there. Okay. And uh, in you know, in JJ, they'll be taught tracing, you know, in different with a tracing paper on a carbon or different uh, means to trace. Then you have drawing. Now, drawing is physically, you said, draw. 
but what will be the actual meaning of drawing philosophical meaning in them? I'm drawing from here. Pani pe nikalte hain kisi mohse. To language mein apan bolte hain na andar se bahar nikala. Draw from within. So there'll be a lot of meaning of uh, drawing. Now the mold. Mold will have because wh wh why I'm uh, uh, emphasizing on these terms because there'll be a lot of technology will be developed later, which will be based on these terms. You know, like you said, film. But the film came much later. The word film we were using even in seventeenth century. You know, a thin film. You know, like, you know, rail. Railway came much later, but the word existed much before the railways came. You know, so the words are much before. You know, that inspired or necessitated a certain technology. You know, to perfect it. To perfect the vision of that world, you know, or materialize it. What I mean to make a shadow of it, you know, because otherwise the word is not tangible. It's an imagination. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. So we will. Uh, so we came to uh, Bombay. In Bombay, me J J School of Art, we say he tracing modeling. Yeah. Then you are Kipling there. So Kipling is a teacher there in JJ school. You have uh, the whole world there, theatre, you know, the whole world in Bombay. Then the father resigns from his job because uh, some Malaysia comes into his class and uh, uh, she makes fun of Falke's father because he has mastered Sanskrit, this boy, and he's fooling around. With the, the professor, his father, because the language is plastic. You know, you, from one word, you take his roots, and it can change into any words. You know, you know, like uh, like we say, no, Krishna is Christ. You know, like that. So you can fool around with language. You know, so this guy has also mastered Sanskrit. You know, and uh, he's arguing with this. So this guy gets insulted. You know, the father's father. And he says, "I am not going to teach this Devasha to this Malaysia," and he resigns and goes back to Irmbakeshwar. Uh, uh, now he tells this boy, you know, Falke, that you come with me. He says, "No, I don't want to go to the village." So he goes to Baroda with his brother, and there you have this Kalabhavan. You know, I mean, I am talking about now. Uh, 18, uh, 1870, 1870. So he goes to Baroda and say, um, 1819. Baroda. Baroda, man, she learns theater, music, painting, photography, still photography. And these are the technologies which have very advanced at <coughs> You know that's time because, uh, like say, you said Van Gogh is a poor man, but Van Gogh was painting oil paints. You know, the oil paint was the extreme of the technology of that time. The oil paint, you know. So, no, as he is. Edu you know, like going through this process of education, simultaneously these technologies are developing. Now, say suppose in Baroda, he there, he is in the still photography, and the still photography has been just developed, you know, and it has a previous history of box cameras, uh, uh, camera obscuras. You have magic lantern coming in, and. Uh, you uh, uh, you have one frame photography, a roll camera is developing where you can take many frames together. So there is a as you now way he is aging or developing simultaneously a technology is developing almost parallel to his growth. Sound is 
developing parallel to his growth. It is almost now imagined that a fetus is developing. So I call it say embryology of cinema. Because we at, at that moment we didn't know that digital is going to come or say you will have this fantastic camera or you will have these fantastic recording machines. So you are having a parallel movement, you know, which will later, you know, make it cinematography or make it, you know, like composite great 3D films, IMAX experiences. And this is how the beginning is, you know. So if you watch the development, it is very interesting. You know. And uh, uh, anyway, so Baroda and backdrop painting. So all the crafts and the arts you need to make a film, he is going through them, through that process of learning. Now today's time, you know, the same, uh, I mean, if he, it took him 30 years to learn all this, Maybe today you go to a film school or somewhere, you might get it in three, four years time, you know. So, Baroda he got that. Then he becomes a still photographer and opens a photography shop in Godra. Then what happens, a plague spreads in Godra and people think he is the culprit, you know, because the photography was considered a black magic. <laughs> so, uh, he separates from his wife during the plague. He comes back, he gets married again. He is about 30 year old. His second wife is 13 year old. Now, when you have 13 year old girl and 30 year old woman, it's a different scenario. You know, like, so I have to keep that in mind if I want to make a film on Falke, you know, keep, what is the relationship then? The first wife and him don't have much difference, you know, they're only two year difference, you know. Then uh, uh, from Baroda, he uh, 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 becomes a backdrop painter. Then he has to have a job. So he becomes a draftsman in archaeology. He travels all, over, all around the country. Then uh, he gets influenced by the Swadeshi movement. He says, I should have my own business. I shouldn't work for the government. Then he opens a small uh, printing, uh, lithographic printing press in Lonawala with, uh, along with uh, Raja Ravi Verma. Raya Rinomar dies, so one uh, rich man sends him to Germany to learn the advanced printing, three color process in Yevo. Awesome. And uh, that's also a high tech. So, so this man is a, you know, like what, top class technocrat you know, of his time. He's not, you know, ordinary middle class, lower middle class kind of a person. Then uh, he uh, resigns from uh, this uh, uh, printing job because uh, there's some dispute with the uh, owner, um, some ideological dispute. He goes blind you know, after this. Then he regains his sight. He sees Christ, life of Christ and he decides to make a uh, film. He makes film. He, uh, then there's a whole process of how he gets the funds, you know, various means of getting funds together, crowdfunding, paisa funding, all kinds of things. Then he makes a super hit film called Sri Lanka Dhan. Then uh, he, 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 he has a big company now and partners. Then he makes Sri Krishna Jan. Then uh, he uh, has a dispute with the partners. He resigns from uh, filmmaking. It takes sannyas and he goes to uh, Banaras in 1920. He writes a seven hour long play, Rangumi, an autobiographical play. And uh, he stages it, it doesn't work. He comes back to the same old company and he works as a supervisor and makes films. He makes about 108 films during, all his children are growing now. You know. I mean, he has about eight children. And uh, children dying, you know, he, he, his daughter is giving birth, he, he, his wife is also giving birth, you know, <laughs> like that. I mean, I see his uh, wife all, all the time pregnant, you know. <laughs> you know that's the image I have in mind. Re reproduction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reproduction. And 108 films. Yeah. It's so art. Yes. Art for <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Symmetry is. Right. 
So you have to find a pattern. No. Okay, even yeah. if you have to find a pattern, yeah. Without that, nothing works. You know, even mm-hmm. if there is no pattern, you have to create a pattern, yeah. or find a pattern and then break it. Right. Right. Huh? Yeah. Basic. So then uh, he makes a film called uh, Setu Bandhan, which is uh, during when the talkies come. <coughs> so he makes a silent film. But then suddenly the talkies are come and uh, nobody is buying his film. So he post sync it, you know, but it still is a failure. Then he has to survive. Now he is about uh, 65 year old. You know, and uh, children are not settled. You know, they are cursing him, you know, like they are uneducated because they never settled down. So and there is this what for nothing grows under his shadow. <laughs> the so then uh, but he is still an entrepreneur. Chit Pawans are very entrepreneurial. So he does a lot of work like extracting silver from old films, making spaghetti, animal boats, uh, boot polish, and a lot of other small, small, anything to just survive. So then finally Maharaja Kolapur invites him to make a film in Kolapur in uh, 1935. So he makes a film called Ganga Avataran. There, iska kya tha ki always uh, he used to make outdoor sets, huge sets. So he has to shoot Himalayas for Ganga Avataran. So what he did that he paints the whole mountain range in Kolapur to make it look like uh, the Himalayas. Rat ko barishati hai and the sara whitewash limelight goes away and he goes crazy. So he goes crazy for a lot of And everything, you know, what is this man doing? You know, like hytomagromania. You know. And uh, other people are growing, the filmmakers are happy, children are, you know, like fantasizing about, you know, the stars. The star system has come. Then he, he uh, is a. Uh, Felicitated uh, as, a, as a father of Indian cinema, and he's given some money to make a house. Then he still wants to make film, so he's imagined a 3D film, something like that. Then finally, he loses his memory, he stopped recognizing people, and, uh, and then uh, uh, he regains his memory. And so that's now oh, in this. 15 pages of the journey, you see so many cities, you know, you see all the arts and crafts mm. that are necessary, you, know. you see, now suppose, now I want to make a feature film on this, you know, and I have to study this, so how do I start, there is a Falke factory, you know, you must see it, now I say, okay, he is born into 1870. So what is I? How do I show it is 1870? So what I did, I did a timeline of 1870, 1871, 1872, 1873, 74 years up to 1944. Then we saw some events in his life. Then you see what is happening in technology and what is happening in politics, what is happening in sociology, and all over the. There is a pattern. Where he is. There's a evolution, you know. So I say, imagine this is still in a fetus, you know. You know. It is not we like I suppose we're sitting all here together. Maybe that's not the fully developed stage, you know. Suppose this is a in a fetus still, you know. You know. So it's so similarly the technology. There's an embryology of technology, you know, or there's an aging that kind of thing. And with this timeline. Suppose there is a uh, 1870 and suppose there is a child, uh, first child born say about 1904. So suppose 1904, so Falke will be say about uh, uh, no, uh, two, uh, 1904, so he will be father, Falke will be 34 years old. His first son will be zero. Now his second son, you know, at uh, two, uh, 1908. So the first son will be four year old, this will be zero. Similarly, you will have all the timelines going you know, and he is also aging and the children will be repeating each other's age. You know, one is eight, 
one is sixteen. So the uh, this eight is repeating the sixteen's eight, mm -hmm. and you suddenly see it, it's a matrix. You know, now matrix is a term which is used for the embryo. You know, is a mother. The matrix, it, the root is there, and if you see this matrix, it has a fantastic beauty. But the problem with this matrix is it can never end. You know. So suppose I am working on say okay the father I have to so I have to say okay he is an katha vachak so okay one hundred eight orani kathas padu so padu he is a okay astronomy padu internet is not available eh? those days by the way internet comes much later this is the arcade project Benjamin's ah uh. so now. Now it's a fantasy escape for me, because uh, people will say, "What are you doing? You have not finished yet, Abhi. But you will know, Abhi. I am working with the father. You know, I just finished astronomy. You know, and uh, but at the same time, I am getting an identity. What are you doing? I am working with Falke. So and there is a scrapbook which is growing. You know, because I am working with the scissor. I am working with the gum. And uh, on my timeline, I'm pasting it, and I'm traveling with this. You know. And there's a book which is growing, wow. like that. Now this is a process, you know. <coughs> and there's a concrete something happening because the book is getting made. It's a handbook, you know. It's a crafting a book, and I haven't written it. Even the suppose I have a thought. I will be looking for a passage from a book in the library. So I just read some passage and I say this fits in. So I will cut it in, you know, see the and paste it. You know, I can't write. The this book is made. It's not written. So the father, so I I could have just been with the father, you know, but then uh, then we went to Parshuram. Gautam Rishi about the Trimbak, the uh, you know, but 108. He made all the films later. What he must have heard from his father, because his father is a katha watcher. Then you come to Bombay, and so you will go to say homeopathy. What are you doing? I am studying homeopathy. In the railways. So what happens then? You go out and you come back. Because you have a subject called Falke, so this going, you know, like this and coming back, this creates a pulse, and it it starts resembling the heartbeat. It gives you a a outside exterior pulse to your activity. Because repetition is the main thing. Because those days you were reading these ideas about. Repeat, rep, repetition, you know, and when they were very big philosophical ideas. So this was the um, process. Then what happened? Then uh, I said, you know, like I have worked on Falke on foot and through libraries, through uh, books, through newspapers, because. That past will also once in a while surface in the magazines, you know. You know, a report about an early photographer in Baikala, and suddenly his face will come. I will cut it. In. Because a lot of people are also, you know, are into archaeology you know, of images or history of Bombay, history of Bodhgaya. <coughs> so then later. And then I made a documentary on Falke uh, children. There is couple of children who are alive, so I interviewed them. Then I did a a comic book with the NID students, or based on this uh, scrapbook. In that, what I did is that for 1870 to 1944, so I divided 10 years. I mean, there were ten students, so I gave them say about ten year each. Now they have to make a comic book based on those ten years that they were given. Now they have to 
draw it or do anything or any form but then they have to use the stylization or the art movement of that time like suppose somebody is uh, say doing uh, uh, 1880 to 1890 so either he could you know like so use uh, Van Gogh style or he can use the technology of that time like say carbon paper or uh, or say uh, maybe Xerox or uh, say printing technology of that time so they had to stick to one kind of a style which was representative of that decade like that then now comes uh, finished part now comes to uh, Indian foundation to the arts I said I travel on foot to know and this project can't be done without a collective. I had a very different kind of a, uh, and idea about it. And the collective is a very glamorous, very fashionable term these days. <laughs> <laughs> we also had a couple of corporate views and we were the foot soldiers. Then uh, I said, you know, like, uh, I must visit all these towns. And uh, we don't have the fiction of that time. In 19th century, 14th century, especially about technology, is it possible to create stories of that time? And what would the way to do it? At the same time, I had this kind of a uh, idea that uh, there's so much information. I mean, I was holding all that in the one single book, which was growing monstrously. So I said, the stories are a means to store means you can condense the information into a form of a story and if you deconstruct it or if you you know break it you can retrieve all the information or like say a icon which is a story and if you deconstruct it you might retrieve all the historical aspect of the time or an image or the social aspect or the mythical aspects or some maybe something like that so we propose to Indian Foundation of Art that I am going to do the 15 day workshops with the local art school or the literate uh, uh, colleges and we are going to give them the information that we have gathered all uh, these years and uh, on the basis of that they can write or invite a story about Falke and his time. So, now this was a time, I mean it was 2006 and the internet had come so we created a, a kind of a, a website called uh, Palke Factory and in that all the information was put there and uh, that information was given to all the students so <coughs> suppose there is some work happening in Nasik and you could go next Bombay so that information on Nasik people can be transferred to the Bombay people through the net and they were participating in the net so you have about 300 people who are involved in the Parque Factory kind of a site and they came out fantastic stories so we came uh, with working them we came uh, and we were recording it so we came around about nine short films about each city our uh, working relationship with each other the students and the way we gave them the information and they come with the stories and their, uh, their search for the research we were documenting it and they were becoming a fiction in them. and they were the part of the story they were trying to it's almost like they were seeking a story or they were finding a story or they were searching a story so the research becomes a story like that so, so we did uh, all the cities, but I couldn't go to Rangbumi. So what you're going to see today is Rangbumi, which is uh, <coughs> his life in exile in Manapas. So thanks to them, I reached so far. Are we still on the escape mode? <laughs> <laughs> Rangbumi is the last one. No, it is, but uh, I couldn't go to Banaras. Last part is in uh, Pune. So, are we could push up to the Pune.
the why this process and why are you making your life difficult? <laughs> why can't this be simplified? The screen is a bit of complete new. I mean, if that's complete, I'll be dead. <laughs> that's my tomorrow. You said you want your work with a lot of people in the process of researching you also unearthed a lot of mythological references that are not in the usual public domain. Yeah. See, so once I realized that what was the political use of the mythology, or because you know, like the, the India is there a lot of states, but it was still a rashtra. There was a singular identity. It is because of the polytheism or the mythology. So all the images they negotiate with each other and transform each other in. So this is a flux of identities, constantly changing, you know, which creates a kind of a, a singular image, you know, which is fantastic. You know. So what we talk about in mythology are not fossilized. You know. yeah. They still are operative in real life <coughs> and of course politics. You know. So this negotiation through this uh, you know, image is fantastic. It's like I tell you. Like suppose there is a two system, Vaishnavite system and Shaivite system. In Kajrao you find this temple. So you will have say Shaivite system. So you will have a Parashi, which is not visible, uh, not manifested. So you will have a Sadashi, which will be a link between the manifest and unmanifest. Sadashi will have then, you know, like uh, other manifestations, I mean next generation. Will be Shiv, Mahadev. Gora, Ye. Then there will be further. So it will be kind of a grid, in a way, a complete family of Shiv's various uh, avatars or rupas with different gunas. In a way. Now, this grid can uh, can keep uh, growing because they'll have, say, so father is Sadashiv, son is Mahadev, grandson is Falana. You know. so, Three names, so there'll be fantastic uh, combination, um, you know, permutation in this renaming, and this grid you can impose on a family system, you know, joint families, ten generations, kingdoms, dynasties. You know. Similarly, like with the Vaishnavites, you'll have the similar kind of a system, you know. and uh, that's why you will find. <coughs> You know, Sadashiv family in say you know, some Bihar, and you'll have a Sadashiv family operating in some Tamil uh, village. You know. And that's how they spread and created a kind of a common identity. Otherwise, uh, they are different. So that's why the, the mythical, mythological language, it's, a, it's not that you, it's a language by itself. You know. A kind of an intellectual language which uh, fascinates me. And I know how it is structured, how it is created. So I uh, apply that and create artificial fictions in it. You know, just for my pleasure. Just for the aesthetic pleasure. Nothing to reflect upon life or you know, uh, reflect upon my ideas or ideology or alignments or I love Modi, I hate Modi. Just to go to aesthetic pleasure. So, so you know, I've always wanted to ask you this. Uh, like, you know, when we're talking about all this, uh, we're basically talking about the, our database of information. Right? There's so much of information. And how we see cinema today, like, contemporary from what we see in the Google Theatre, in the very pockets. What we see is that the database or the storage of this information in a very narrative way. That is narrativized in a very different way, and we get information over information and we have to solve it. We have to put in that kind of position. But you are one of the filmmakers who 
was also very concerned with the form. He watched, I have watched Kundar, but I have watched Akhil. So, for, and he very much concerned with the form, with the way you edit, or whatever it is. So still playing with the cinematic form. So, but you also deal with a lot of information. You also deal with, as you said, like stories and mythologies and you keeps it all up. So, so how do you just make this connection with form and this load of information that you have? You build a language. See, I do very mechanically. Like suppose the, the, I take information, I keep stuffing it, keep stuffing it. And I try to, uh, I have two hours and I will keep stuffing it. I have too much information. <coughs> and uh, but I have only two hours. But I don't, you just don't want to say that yeah, I can't put more data in. Because you know, doing and time mm-hmm. I put more mm-hmm. till it suffocates. You know, mm-hmm. And once it, you know, you keep pushing in inside, something has to change. So it will find a structure or it will it will take a shape that it holds everything together. So my it's a physical activity, you know, more than a mental activity, that to talk talk to make it solidify. So at one point it uh, there's a mutation. Or you know, quantum and either it will absorb the energy or leave the energy. So it can be fatal also, physically. <coughs> it's a, because in the end, it's a delusion. Ah, yes. It's a delusion. So first, I have to delude myself. So basically, the principle is same. Like, so, the other thing is push the left. So these activities are no more than a magic trick quest. He has a garpendi karnachi. These things are not advisable. Normally, you talked about the Chippa and Brahmin classic. We take that. We take this one. So, two, one is you say you will come back to it. That was about how you used to do it. The other one which was interesting to me was about politics, not about parties or anything, but about the process of writing film or showing what you do and how, as a filmmaker, you have the power. Politics is about power. As a filmmaker, you have the power to show something and influence. But also, as a filmmaker, you are, you are also being influenced by many things. You, you, you can identify your brotherhood, your kinship among the artists. Even you are not that great. But uh, I say, okay, uh, Alan Reynolds will speak. So uh, uh, it's a kinship also. And uh, on another dimension, we maybe we aren't from same family or same town or something, but there is some kind of a, you know, a kinship or consciousness, you know, maybe it has some kind of a liking for each other. So at what age do you feel that it should be used for us when we are starting out? How do we influence the influence that is effective? Like, for you. <laughs> I think, um, I believe in the, the thought is looking for the thinker rather than the thinker is looking for the Because they hunt you down. Like Falke and these guys, they became immortal because they knew their host is going to hunt down people and they will take over the headspace as well. So there will be somebody looking for you. If you are worthy of it. Yeah. <laughs> and the second question was about you said you come back to about the power of story, stories. That's what we've been talking about. All the time. <laughs> but uh, there is, but uh, I think you know, like, you should uh, uh, see this Parke uh, factory. You go to timeline, there's a book one, book two. So there is an information given, and then Hansa, uh, she has transferred that information into some small fiction. And get the picture. 
ऐसा बोलते हैं सात लोग जो है ना समुद्र से धुल के सहयाद्री की चट्टानों के नीचे आए थे उस परशुराम ने उनको उठा के चिता पे उसकी अग्नि से उनको शुद्ध करा के उनमें प्राण आ गए तो उनको चिपका बदमाशी ने ब्रह्मा विष्णु <laughs> I don't know why. तो वहीं पे पुष्कर में तो पूजा जाता है सर। हाँ। एक तो उनके है और साथ में दूसरा जो सिक्योरिटी टीम का सबसे ज़्यादा वो है। They open a small cinema. पुष्कर। जैसे रामायण ये वो डाक्टर्स करते हैं वो उधर सबसे ज़्यादा सिक्योरिटी बचपन में तो मतलब कॉलेज से कड़ी मार के और चरस वरस मिले तो वही जाते जो कब्रिस्तान है जहाँ सब बांग्लादेश भी वही आते हैं जाते थे अब जब सिक्योरिटी बहुत हो गई है मैं तो दारू पी के घूमता था अंदर एंड जो सब माफिया वाला आते तो मतलब ये हम लोग तो साथ में खाए भी हैं दाऊद भाई दिलीप कुमार एक ही थाली में ऐसा खाना नहीं खाए बोले एक से तुम्हें नजर आता है वहाँ तो क्या कहते हैं हिंदुस्तान का एक ही राजा है वो हो गया है bringing in dargah and pushkar all over the satellite city so bringing their mythology to the world and the way we chaar tha mujhe laga ki aap kaun se hain i was going to ask you so how does the place where you are influence how you think place is very important because uh, more than the place it is the landscapes say like pushkar it's uh, like a uh, uh, Two million. Okay. Now Ajmer is also like mountains, and uh, then the, there's no place to go out. So the, uh, the, uh, the so for me the imagination was the houses are climbing the mountains, you know, and on the top when you come to Taragar they are graves. Slowly the houses climb the mountain and they turn to graves. Now this imagery freaks me out. So uh, it, uh, it it gives me some kind of fiction, automatically. Or you must have seen uh, from Ajmer, you see from any point that you have uh, Bade P, that uh, you know, like Panavision kind of a white uh, uh, thing. That for me it becomes like a, a Panavision, you know, or a, a drive-in cinema kind of a thing, where all the people of Ajmer. Can take out their chairs, sit in the carriages, and watch it. That so the landscaping is so fantastic because 
because most of the like you know most of the stories uh, they trigger off mythology. I mean, the, because they are uh, for me they are like say what you say is yantra uh, kind of things. So that's very important. Like you can do wonders with a well. So that's one very important thing. The landscapes. That's the most. Pushkar fantasy. Yeah. But so different from each other. And I used to yeah. associate the Ajmer and Pushkar with people and faith. But it's interesting that you're saying. Like for me, Ajmer and you go through, you enter into that passage and you are turning to Pushkar, you know, which I use in the Pushkar to that and opening film. It becomes like a, you know, crossing the threshold and you come into the different world, you know. So I did the same thing when I was working on a novel called Punishment, that's so one year. So I can, they are different worlds, that like, it's like hero journey and you cross the threshold and come into extraordinary world. So for me, Pushkar's extraordinary world can become Ajmer or Ajmer's extraordinary world can become Pushkar. That's why I don't leave Ajmer because Bombay I can't, um, I can only make a sociological film there. Yeah. <laughs> no? But yes. Yeah. And there is a multi-story building, there is a car and an accident. Yeah. <laughs> 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 